Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our morning devotions. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if your Facebook looked different than uh, it did before, but uh, this morning I was trying to figure out how to get a live feed working, and I don't know, it seems like every time I turn on something, it uh, changes. So I had to do some finagling. I'm hoping this is working right. Um, it did not look normal. <laughs> Uh, whatever normal is, uh, at least this morning. So uh, me and my non-technological brain uh, couldn't figure out what was going on there. So anyway, I think we got it working. Hopefully it is. And we're going to jump into the Gospel of John this morning and look at uh, what the Lord is trying to teach us, what the Lord was trying to communicate to his disciples. And again, the overall theme of the Gospel of John, as he records later in this uh, in his book, he says, is that people would believe that if you read and as you read his writing, his um, uh, his story of the God or the story of the life of Jesus and his ministry and his impact on people, that we would come away from that. We'd walk away with a belief, uh, a genuine belief that God is who he says he is, that Jesus is the Son of God, did come to die, did come to be raised from the dead, to give us life, to give us purpose, to give us hope and meaning. And so um, we pray that it would be the case in all of us. So we've looked at all these different things. Yesterday we looked at the idea that um, Jesus calls himself the vine and us the branches, that we are uh, to be uh, linked to him, that we are to be uh, joined to the vine, our source of nourishment and strength and supply and power. And by ourselves, we can't do anything. Uh, he talks about that. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing because we're not good uh, in and of ourselves. And I think that's important to note. Um, the the le next section in um, John chapter 15, Jesus uh, says some pretty famous words. Uh, so words that you might have heard before. And I just want to set the tone here and remember let's remember the context. Remember the context. This is Thursday night. This is the night of his arrest. This would be the night that they had the Last Supper. Uh, this would be um, his final time with the disciples before his death. Uh, he's going to be arrested later this evening, put on trial, executed by the next morning. And so Jesus has a meal with the disciples, communion is instituted, he washes their feet, all these different things. He tells them he's getting ready to go to glory, all this stuff. So in that context, Jesus says in verse 9, he says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, we've heard that before, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down his one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what his master's business is. Instead, I have called you friends for everything I have learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you may you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so what? And, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command: love each other. And so really, that that's what it boils down to. Honestly, it is Jesus's command here is to love one another. He says, "My command is this: verse twelve, love each other as I have loved you." So then we have to back up and ask that question: Well, how did Jesus? love us? Um, in what ways did Jesus love us? Uh, well, one, he was willing to sacrifice what was rightfully his in order for us to be blessed, right? Philippians chapter 2 says, even though he was equal to God, right? Even though he was equal to the Father, he relinquished that position in glory and made himself a human being coming to earth, right? There's a, there's a sacrificial humility that comes in that. Uh, he did become a servant, right? He served us. He served humanity. He served the needs of the people that he lived with. Um, he spoke truth is another de demonstration of his love for us, right? Uh, it, it's not loving to not speak the truth. Now, we have to do that tactfully. We have to do that wisely. We have to do that with gentleness and respect. 
but we are to do that. Uh, Jesus laid his life down for us. I mean, the ultimate form of sacrifice uh, would be to lay one's life down. And so Jesus says, my command is this, you love each other as I have loved you. As you've watched me do this, as you've watched me love the world that I came to die for, I want you to go and do that as well. He even says to this degree, he says, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. That's what I want. I want you to keep my commands. I want you to love me. And the way you love me is you obey me. Um, and that's how you bless me. That's how you stay connected. And so I want us to consider that in our own life just for a few moments. Like, what evidence is there in our life that we love other people? Right? Now, Jesus goes on to talk about, um, in other parts of the scripture, he talks about, uh, let's be careful that we don't just love those people and treat those people with grace and respect. Um, let's not only treat the people who can repay that. So it's, it's no good for us. It's not really love if you're loving someone that's easy to love and, and they love you back and, and they'll, they'll give you good things in return. He's saying we are called to love those who won't return that love. Um, so I, I think about that in our own life. What, what is the evidence, right? What is the proof? What is the evidence that you love other people? Um, so outside of your, ex, your family, uh, what evidence is there that you love people? I would start within the, fa the family of believers. Like, what evidence is there that you love people that you worship with, that you gather with on Sunday morning, that maybe you gather in a small group together? What evidence is there that you love them? Are you doing anything that would demonstrate that? Um, can you honestly, can we honestly answer that? Like, the people that you worship with, that you are part of the same family of believers, our church family, if, you part, if you're part of Lake Eustis, what evidence is there that you love those people? What are you doing? Are you praying for them? Uh, do you consider their needs? And do you look around to see how you might be able to be a blessing to other people in the church family? Um, is that your posture? Is that what you do? Um, are you looking for ways to encourage the family of believers? Uh, are you looking for um, ways to educate people on the gospel of Jesus that are in your church family? And then maybe step outside of that, like people in the community that we live in, what evidence is there that you love them? Right, when we ask that, if we were to ask that question of Jesus, okay, Jesus, what evidence is there that you love um, people? Uh, the, the evidence would be overwhelming. I mean, he spent his entire life serving other people, blessing other people, healing other people, encouraging other people, teaching other people. That's what he did. I mean, that was this what flowed out of him. I realize it's Jesus, right? I understand that. But in our life, what is the evidence? If we struggle with answering that question, do we really love people the way Jesus asked us to love them? I recognize that's somewhat convicting. It's certainly convicting to me because there are days that I go by and I wonder, did I show any evidence that I loved anybody? Am I, did I really serve anybody? Did I look to bless other people? Did I look to encourage someone? Did I look to hold someone accountable? Are, are those things happening in my life? That's convicting to me and I, maybe it's convicting to you as well. Then he says this, and I love this passage. Jesus says in verse 15, he says, um, well, verse 14, he says, you are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything I have learned from my father I've made known to you. That's a cool thing. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, that Jesus is saying, we're not just cogs in the wheel. We're not just <clears throat> robots that he has down here doing his business. We're not like in some kind of a spiritual sweatshop where we're carrying out the mission of Jesus and we're like these clones of his that he has made us to do these things. That's not how that is. Jesus says, I saw value in you. You matter to me. I recognize what benefit you have to the kingdom, how much you add in terms of value to the kingdom. I'm inviting you to be partners with me. I'm inviting you to be part of who we are and what we're doing in this world. That he says, I entrust myself to you. I, I give you these words. I give you this gospel. I give you this message. I give this responsibility to you. Why? Because I trust you and I love you and I want to see you flourish in your ministry. 
he calls us friends in the gospel of Jesus. Um, and I just think that's a cool thing. So are you a friend of him? Are you following his way? Are you walking in his mission uh, of loving the world? Um, what evidence is there in your own life? So consider that today. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word. As convicting as it is at times, God, we read things sometimes and we we realize that there are areas of our life that we need to submit fully to you. That maybe we don't love like we should love. Or maybe we only love those that we think can love us in return. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to develop a mindset and an attitude where we would love people the way you love them, that we'd be gracious to them the way you're gracious to them, even if they can't repay that love and graciousness to us. Help us to get there, God, in your power and your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Hope you have a good afternoon. Thanks for joining us this morning. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. All right. God bless.